Talk about back on the half. A number of analyst calls out today that we wanted to highlight for you. Number one, Paramount. Upgraded Jim uh, to hold from sell. All right, so they got off the sell train there. Uh, to hold, price target still 14. No longer believe downside is that much greater than the upside. So there was a transaction announced last night where uh, a couple of partners, including Byron Trott, Michael Dell's uh, investment office, are investing in National Amusements, which is Sherry Redstone's, the largest uh, and the controlling shareholder in Paramount's uh, investment arm. So here's what's happening. Byron <laughs> Trott, known to be or thought to be over the years as Warren Buffett's I mean, favorite banker. Be, yeah, like the guy, the inside guy. A so, plus B equals. <laughs> and I'm thinking about, and you referenced this a month ago, right, that the Becky Quinn uh, CNBC interview with Warren Buffett in which he lambasted the company but then chuckled and said we'll see what happens right so we're seeing what is happening uh, Byron Trott uh, Warren Buffett Michael Dell Sherry Redstone getting together look there is value in this company but the only way they're going to unlock it is is in a transaction is that what you're gaming I mean is that what yes. you're playing for and, it, yes. and if you own Paramount and you've listened to Jim obviously talk about the stock for for months if not years is that is the it's either that or bust. Uh, I don't think it's bust, but there's no share. Price. I don't, you know what I, I don't mean I, I so literal as so, bust, but let me phrase it this way, right? Before last earnings report, this was something where I thought they can go it on their own and really thrive. Mm -hmm. They can still go it on their own, but they're not going to really thrive. Right. They need a partner with pockets. They need cost synergies. By the way, if they partnered with somebody who's already in the space, they could raise their ARPU. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to do a transaction, and they've got throw weight: 60 million at Paramount Plus, 82 million at Pluto. Yep. I you don't know if you remember. Yeah, real quick. Um, I ended up buying this in 2020, and I paid about 16 bucks for it. I think the price that it's at right now, like, that's bust. You know, if you look at just the value of the content, which is actually quite valuable, like, this, you know, it's worth something. It's probably worth 15 bucks a share. Okay. Uh, next up, United Health and CBS initiated overweight at Piper Sandler. Uh, United Health, 580 is the price target. CBS is 85. Seat you first on United Health, uh, which is been a, a disappointment this year after having a great 22. Yeah, we reduced it last September. It's been a long-term core holding for us. Uh, we reduced last year in September. We reduced again in early March this time, primarily due to cost. It's getting valuation and cost. It's getting pressure from rising medical costs which is weighing on their cash flow. Well, the valuation has come down a little bit this year, Scott. It still trades at a premium to the healthcare sector. And we've been focused more on the pharma space this year where we're seeing better top line momentum. Names like Lilly and the like, so. Yeah. Amex reiterated overweight at Morgan Stanley, Jenny. Price target to 188. Right. So Amex actually had a really great quarter. And I think one of the things that, I mean, it's trading at 12 times earnings right now, which is a historical low. And that's part of Morgan Stanley's upgrade is saying, hey, this is too low a valuation. But I think one of the reasons it's trading down is because people are saying, oh, the consumer is weak. But you need to remember that Amex has a disproportionate amount of their sales coming from travel and leisure. And that remains very strong. It's a phenomenal company and it's undervalued.